Oh, it started. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now is a good time to explain everything we've been talking about on this Chaos Green Wall networking call on okay. November 19th. Mm -hmm. um, so Kevin asked the question of whether or not the work we're doing in this call has a user, and the answer is yes. So the Chaos Project is connecting with uh, Jenkins X and Zephyr, and the the work here is something that um, folks in this relationship have asked for, and so we're just trying to see if we can't kind of work this out um, through the processes that Daniel talked about. So the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. really yeah. Community community PDFs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for this, for for the um, <coughs> sorry, for the for the request that you see on on your screens, we are likely focusing on the very last thing, which is is right of issues changing due to a growing community being more involved for raising issues, or because the leading edge of the project has too many bugs. Uh, so instead of going for everything, we are focusing on this. Um, we call this as a producer community function or workload adequacy. Um, our idea is to compare, if possible, evolution of producers, consumers, and number of issues at some point. Um, check if any of this makes sense. So this is it. Um, and now that there, we were having some open discussion about what a producer is for you, what a consumer is for you, and what an issue is for you. Um, yeah, so we can go for producers or consumers. Any comments, ideas? Oh, Matt, you are mute, I guess. Yeah. You had made the comment about commits, and that might be, yep. yeah, for producers. Well, I mean, that might be the simplest way to start. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then downloads for com uh, consumers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the point is, how do we get downloads? Yeah. So for consumers, perhaps we can... Oh, sorry, can you say again? Maybe forks? Yeah, maybe forks. Yeah. I was thinking, in the case of consumers, that kind of the rest of the community. So perhaps those talking in the mailing list or uh, those opening issues as well, or those uh, commenting here and there. So basically anyone anyone else that is in somehow participating in the rest of the channels. Of course, there are other consumers that we cannot can you, track. Can you get a sense of how many people are in the community? Because basically what I hear you saying is maybe committers versus people who make commits versus not. Yeah, it's kind of this. Because mm -hmm. if you can, if yeah, I mean, that's, again, simple is great. And if you can get um, a general idea that there are X number of people in the community, mm -hmm. and then just subtract that from, or subtract the number of committers from that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you're proposing, essentially. Mm -hmm. producing code, and then, yeah. More ideas about the consumer, what this is? Yeah. Apps. I know. Um, so we have forks and downloads. We cannot hear any kind of package, right? Is Docker, bit, etc. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, issues lead to the specific definition issues chaos, but in reality, is those fact reports being open? We have Jira and any other uh, system. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, any other idea, comments here? No, I, I think this is a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps what we can do now is define how to visualize this, or what do you think about creating? We, we can start now with the mockup if you want, or we can yeah. keep defining things. Yeah. What do you think? I'm going over there. Shall we go to the Jamboard then? We'll I see that someone is doing things. Alberto, is that you? <laughs> I don't know. Put the what, link uh, in the chat again. So. There's a computer. Yeah. The link to the Jamboard is in the minutes. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. So I, I was asking Alberto because you are probably then the expert here because you've been playing a lot. So then you can start helping with the mockup in somehow. What do you think? I was trying to put a computer and then some frames inside to mm-hmm. start with the mockup, but you removed the laptop. So. Oh no! I didn't do anything. So someone did. It. it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the usual, if we go for the usual uh, dashboards, so one of the things we have noticed is that having a lot of widgets in the same dashboard is a bit confusing sometimes. So we came back with the idea of, uh, let me check if this works, having this kind of dashboards where you have four, five, six widgets, some help at the bottom, and then this is all. So something that focuses on the analysis here for uh, for the specific metric we would like to have. Um, if we go for the discussion we have for today, the very the very first thing I see that we can produce would be something like this. So we have a chart, and then we basically uh, have some evolution here, and then we would have some other evolution here, and then we would have like uh, total number of issues that might be this one, right? So then we can make we can start making some comparisons there, because then uh, we may have some uh, help here at the bottom, right? And start doing uh, anything else. So we need to complete in somehow the rest of the of the dashboard. So. What is that first chart that you were showing, Daniel? What yeah, was, so we can go for the layout. So the blue one would be, um, uh, for instance, uh, wood producers. Then okay. the green one would be consumers, for instance. And the yellow total. Yeah, and then yellow would be the number of issues because we are trying to represent. Uh, the three things and compare them. So the so the producers is the the count of producers, like the yeah. total count of mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Same with consumers; it's the total count of of people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And okay. then this one does it make sense to have this chart? I don't know. Yeah, it does. I guess I'm wondering how you think we're gonna be able to connect producers as the issue producers versus consumers as the issue producers. That's ultimately where we're, I think we're trying to go. Hmm. Uh, what if what if we try, so in timeline in Kibana, one of the things we can do is to uh, have some uh, specific functions on each of the time series so we can combine time series. So, oh, whoever did the uh, make that smaller was a really good idea. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Thank you. There, oh, that's good. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so what if we, for instance, try to have like a time series of the blue things uh, divided by the yellow ones and then the green things divided by the yellow ones? Yeah, because then it would be a ratio of that group. Yeah. Yep. Are we basically looking at the the Pareto principle here? 
Is this the 80 20 thing or is it something a little bit different? Mm. So that's a good question. What we are trying to have, and perhaps we are not in the right way, is uh, if we, we want we want a way to check if the rate of issues is changing because of the community is becoming more well, bigger or more involved and so on, or because there are simply more issues in the project. Because uh, you know, it's becoming more and more buggy. So one of the first things we had in mind was, okay, we have people producing code and then we have people creating bugs and talking in the community and so on. So if we go for the second group of people, is, is there any relationship? Can we look for a specific, uh, you know, statistics that can help here as, uh, for doing this? Do you think, Kevin? Yeah, so okay. I, don't, I don't think it would be the Pareto rule in this case. Yeah. Because I think it's just trying to understand I mean, honestly, the way that Daniel, you were describing it there, it's just, you were just trying to find the sourcing of the issues, mm. whether it's producers or consumers. <laughs> are you, are you trying to connect the issues to pull requests as well? Not at the moment. Not in this case, mm -hmm. but we can. Okay. Another, another thing we can, we can use is there are some specific metrics that are used for maintenance. For instance, one, one of them that we are using is the BMI, which is the uh, Backlog Management Index, which typically is the number of open issues, no, number of closed issues by the community in a certain period. And then we, we compare that with the number of open issues in that specific period. So then you have a metric of, this is used in maintenance of software. And in that case, we have a specific metric to understand if the community is able basically to work faster than the number of issues are coming to the community, or if perhaps they are slower. And that may be something that we can, it can help as well. Because if, if in a recurring way, there are bugs that simply keep open, then people will start having like a lot of work. Could you describe that last one again? Yeah, so uh, let me look for this definition. It's backlog uh, management index. So, uh, yeah, I have some quick link I found around. So uh, let me add this to here. So we can use perhaps this, just this. So this is like, uh, uh, mm -hmm. This is basically what we are doing. Number of problems closed during the month out of the number of problems that arrive during okay. that month. And then we have a value if BMI is larger than 100 or, or, or one, that depends on the scale we use. Then it seems that the, basically the backlog has been reduced. Otherwise, this means that the backlog increased. So if we have recurring values under 100 or under one in this case, that means that the backlog is growing and growing and growing. So would, uh, the size is, of the backlog. Hmm? Is the proposal to use, instead of just the ratio of, um, say, consumers over issues, but actually taking a look at the BMI for consumers and taking a look at the BMI for producers? Is that right? Mm, so would we like having another metric in the same dashboard? Because okay. the consumers versus producers is giving us a view of who's maintaining somehow. Okay. I can say maybe, uh, not really. For that, we, we may need to go for the code review process. But anyway, um, having BMI may help to have uh, like the maintenance ratio of the community somehow. So it's another way of thinking around kind of the same topic. BMI is interesting because it it gives, yeah, the first one I agree, it's a little, I'm still not convinced that that tells the full story, but the BMI is interesting to me because it tells me about issues as related to consumers or producers. Mm -hmm. 
it kind of tells me what's happening with those issues that yes that live in those different groups yeah so i we do have this in the dashboards uh even the efficiency thing but alberto do you remember or valerio you know exactly remember Yes, that one. This one, can have PC's efficiency? Oh yeah, BMI, here we go. What's that telling me? Yeah, so let me go for the last few years, for instance. So this is, uh, so the green line is the BMI uh, yep. per month, I guess. Yeah, this is at the level of month, no, at the level of week. So each of the dots we have are weeks, uh, just focused on the, uh, whoops, not the other, sorry. Let me move this. Um, remove this. Uh, so we have the green line. The green line is telling us this backlog management index for chaos. Okay. So basically, values over one means that we are uh, doing well. Yeah, exactly. The backlog is reduced. Okay. While values under one, so all of this means that we are not that good. So basically, we are not that fast in the community. Um, we can have a, a, a number for this. So we can have a BMI of 1.5 uh, for the last month, for instance. So in this case, we have value of, uh, uh, this is 1.5, for instance, here, as you can see in the chart, as, as I move, right? Um, and then we have the trend. So basically the trend is positive in this case. So then this is telling us we are improving in our management, although we are still missing how many bugs we still have open in the community. So this might be another another thing. Okay. So you could produce um, a BMI for issues opened by committers. Uh, yeah, one of the things we can have is the number, the BMI, so the backlog management index and then perhaps compare this with the number of producers. Correct. So you could have it, you could have a BMI for basically consumers, issues opened by consumers mm -hmm. and a BMI for issues opened by producers. It's something However, we can try. Mm -hmm. yep. um, that would be interesting to me. I guess it, is it staying in the spirit of that first? from the comment. I, I think we're getting away a little bit from uh, asking the reason why we yeah. are having more issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think our approach before dividing the number of issues by number of consumers and a number of contributors separately I think that gives us more insight as to what type of issues and whether they are coming in uh, because of a growing community, because mm -hmm. then we have a lower ratio, or if the same community is producing more issues. Which then yeah. Can you can you find out that that same information just by looking at uh, tagging within issues and pull requests? Like if, if the goal is to see if this is a bug, uh, is it? It seems like it's overly complicated to see if you're looking at it for consumers versus mm -hmm. committers. If you just want to know if it's a bug, mm -hmm. perhaps. So I remember part, part of the discussion we had here in the request is uh, rate of issues weighted by community interest level. So perhaps using label or some priority may help as well to, to split with those, what do you think? Like actually tagging the issue? Yeah, so, uh, so what I see here would be like, uh, oh, well, let me open a new chart. And like having this, and then we can have like, uh, for instance, blue are the bugs that are really high priority. Mm -hmm while green artifacts that are really low priority and then they have some exponential whatever. And then 
yellow ones are the ones with medium priority that are, for instance, this one. So if we go for the blue as really high priority, we can say, okay, it seems that the community is kind of stable, but they have a problem with the low priority or the other way around, whatever we decide. But, um, but perhaps having that split may help here because this, oops, this split here is like uh, our line here on the top. So this yellow line, which is the evolution of charts, the evolution of issues, right? So then this is a way to, so the second chart would be a way to split the first chart issues trend. And this may help to have this somehow. So this runs under the assumption that, the, that these things are tagged, right? Yeah, but of course in GitHub, they are not, well, they are using labels and so on. I don't know if they have priorities, but in other backtracking systems, as and others, they do have this. And the communities have a process for specifying this and that. So it's something we can track. Okay. I just know that kind of expecting labels to be there mm -hmm. can be tricky sometimes or hoping that labels are available. Somebody's trying to write consumer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very delicately on their trackpad. <laughs> so that's the only ch that's the only thing I see as challenging. Because mm -hmm. like things like trying to determine whether or not somebody's a committer, as you talked about very early along, Daniel, mm -hmm. or they're not a committer. I think mm -hmm. those are things that can be consistently understood. I mm -hmm. think understanding where an issue comes from can also be consistently understood. Mm -hmm. Labels just don't always show up. Yeah. That's all. And to, mm -hmm. if they're consistently used in a community, then fine. Like if it's Kubernetes, you know, I think they consistently use labels. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what do you think about this. Perhaps we can add some more, uh, <laughs> it's like, APIs here. It's looking like at a, it's like looking at a grade school. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense, but looking having people write <laughs> is really pretty funny. <laughs> Don't get me wrong; it's super helpful. This is really great. Yeah. Um, so perhaps I would prefer something where I could actually type. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to use my trackpad. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah cool. having this. So this is why I was using the tablet. On the, yeah, you have the advantage of having a pen. <laughs> okay, no. So I would honestly, I would suggest maybe as we've talked through other ways to think about mm -hmm. this issue in detail, maybe the easiest place to start is honestly that first chart that you had made, Daniel, in the upper left corner, mm -hmm. which is just trying to produce the number of issues yellow and producers and consumers based on commit. Mm -hmm. And then a second chart, which is what Georg seemed to be in favor of, which was just the ratio of issues to those people. Mm -hmm. And that might be a great place to start. Yeah. I just think as, as, as being drawn in the bottom right corner right now. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to draw. Okay. <laughs> So like the upper upper left corner to start and then the bottom right corner to yeah. finish. Um, so um, it's like uh, 14 minutes to, to finish the meeting, probably like in, we should leave in eight, eight or nine. Um, first question is, do we have any volunteer with a certain time during the week to try this in Grimoire Lab? Just asking. So I have a question. How do I even identify which authors are producers and which ones are contributors. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. It's something we need to check in the data. My first approach would be to go for those in the Git repositories are producers, um, more or less. So we can go for some big disclaimer somewhere. And then we can go for producers, anyone else. So in the rest of the repositories or data sources. So does that mean we have to add a 
field somewhere to say this user also shows up in Git or never shows up in Git? A flag, one of true or false? The next step is uh, hard to have because it's not easy to track someone in Git repositories and GitHub issues, for instance. So perhaps, again, with a big disclaimer, and for this very first approach, we can go and say, we have the list of people participating in Git, and then we have the rest of the people participating in, uh, in the rest of the data sources, and we may have some intersections, but we may have, we can assume that people producing, uh, well, talking in the mailing list, they are consumers, but they are producers if they are in the Git repository, so we have the same people. We, have, we can have some intersections there, and that's okay. What do you think? Basically, say we divide the number of issues by number of issue authors, mm -hmm. and we divide the issues number of issues by number of Git authors. Yeah, that's something to and start with. Say there is probably an overlap here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could could you uh, could you take any anyone who participated in an issue, like so anyone who made a comment on an issue, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically so subtract those people from the uh, people who have commits? Yeah, so we... The other way around. Hmm, so in, in Git commit, oh, sorry, in Git issues, I think we don't have uh, the number of comments yet. This is in process, as far as I remember. Valerio can probably tell a bit more here. Um, and the other, uh, the problem is about, perhaps you are using Kevin Lambert in GitHub issues, but you are using just uh, BARD in Git, and we don't know how to match you in both well, actions. Do you have Sorting Hat does? Don't we match those identities in Sorting Hat? Yeah, that may work, but there are for sure, this is not going to be 100% accurate. That's all. OK, so let's assume we have solved the problem of matching the same person on issues and Git commits. Mm -hmm. How can I flag someone who was active in a certain month in Git as a producer? Um, so then the point would be that you are not doing that, but you are just displaying in timeline in Kibana those people that participated in Git. And then you are displaying in uh, Kibana, again, in timeline, people that only participated in GitHub issues. So there's not a need to label people people uh, with this. Or the other way is that you can start a new index and have the list of people labeled by whatever and then create your own your own thing from scratch. So both approaches. I guess I'm thinking of creating a new index then. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so it's 10 minutes to leave. So uh, I don't know. What, what do you think about today's meeting? I think it was great. These are always great for me. It just it gives me so much insight as to what's going on and how this works. So um, in terms of actually building this, I don't think I'm the person to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I would, I think it would be helpful um, mm -hmm. if something moved forward before next week. Um, particularly in response to trying to work on these. Um... Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Matt, you got frozen, maybe? Yeah, he does that. Yeah. <laughs> so what's that? Well, did, my, okay. um, did I go unstable again? Yeah, gotcha. and you, can you say again? Yeah, so I don't think I'm the person to do the reports, but I do think it would be extremely helpful mm -hmm. to move this forward even kind of just listening to where you all were in mm -hmm. terms of like disclaimers and <laughs> saying this isn't perfect. And these are kind of first looks because I think, I think we all have kind of, we all know like, getting these things in front of folks, whether it's folks from Jenkins X or folks from Zephyr, it's a great way to kind of see if this is providing any bit of transparency mm -hmm. on the issue that are of concern to them. So Point being, I think it's great. I would love to see it move forward, but I'm not the person to do it. Okay. Um, so perhaps one of the things we can do, at least, so we are having the next week another meeting. 
so at least this is what we have right now. So we can start with discussing about uh, the data we have in the indexes and try to start building the panel. So if there, are, if there are not advances, that might be part of the agenda for the next day. Sounds great. Okay, so if any other comment? No, nope, thanks for running this. You're welcome. And I, and I found the, the IEEE paper, so you're all Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you can quit searching, so. All right. Well, I may see some of you in about eight minutes. And if yeah, not, so we can leave for today the talk. So thank you very much for your time. Yeah. I'm going to stop the recording. Bye.